All right, guys. Well, if you've been around longer than five minutes online or playing video games, you know, looking around, seeing what's out there, you would know that Ubisoft is not the most trusted name in game development. Unfortunately, they have a long, sad history of screwing over their customers, doing things poorly, not necessarily delivering a product, having bad workplace environment, you name it. So you can see that uh, this article from last month about Skull and Bones from Forbes talking about how it looks like it's doing worse than Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, which is pretty impressive because that game just dropped off a cliff. Uh, unfortunately, because they don't have any way of accessing the numbers, there's no way of knowing how many people are currently playing Skull and Bones. All you know is it's bad. <laughs> okay, it's not good. So now we have this new Ubisoft game coming out here, this Star Wars Outlaws game, which we talked about just yesterday. And there's a lot of controversy around it. Um, they're being accused of using bots on Twitter to try to artificially increase the algorithm to where people are going to be talking about the game and actually wanting to play it because they see all this bot activity on Twitter talking about it. And you can see the screenshots right here of all these accounts. Um, and of course, this was put together by Master of the TDS. And you can see all the screenshots right here, all these accounts just talking gibberish. And then, of course, we had the community manager, Shauna Jones, who decided to go out there and say a whole bunch of racist stuff about white people. And she is actually back, but she is back, she's back to being protected again, but she is back on Twitter. And she put out this announcement today, I'm back and I've decided I'm not going anywhere. The folks attacking me and using me to push their agenda are not going to win this one. But then she basically immediately went protected. So you can see she is on here, but she is not, you can't see anything she's posting. So she's here for her friends and that's about it. Then you have Nikki Foy, who we also talked about, who calls herself the Maven of Filth, whatever that means, who is one of the writers on Star Wars Outlaws. Ironically, she has a website that as of yesterday, as I've noticed, completely disappeared from her li uh, link on her Twitter account. And this is all you see if you go to NikkiFoy.com. So whatever was here is now locked behind this little login screen right here. You can still see on her LinkedIn, though, that she is working on Star Wars Outlaws at Ubisoft Toronto. Another person who has been shown to be completely unhinged at Ubisoft is Sarah uh, Ariano, who has said things like, In real life, when a man attacks a woman in rage, remember that he feels victimized by her. He sincerely believes that he is in danger and he's acting in self-defense. Consider this when observing men's rights activists. Alpha male military-style training camps. HGH-soaked uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belts preaching an end to feminism. They are terrified of people half their size with half their rights. Consider that half my country literally believes that killing the other half will keep them safe. Villains don't wake up, crack their knuckles, cackle with glee, and get to work hurting others. They wake up scared and put all their energy in protecting themselves. And this is her talking about how she writes villains, and she's comparing it to writing about men's rights activists. Okay, that's where she's at. And you can see Sarah Ariano, uh, writer and narrative designer at Ubisoft, and she has also had experience at Blizzard, at Volition, quite a few different places. Ironically... I went to check her Twitter account, and I don't ever remember interacting with her, but over the last month, a lot's happened, so I am blocked. So that's just one more I got to add to the list of people who have just blocked me. Now we get to today, and the trailer for the Star Wars Outlaws game has dropped, the actual official story trailer. And currently, when I, when I brought this up to use in the video, it was sitting at 22,000 likes and 13,000 dislikes. I'm going to refresh it and see if it changes. I got to make sure it's muted, though, because I don't want to... Get in trouble if there's anything with copyright or whatever. So now it's up to 14,000 dislikes. You can see that happen in real time. So another 1,000 dislikes. So that's not exactly going well for Star Wars, for Ubisoft, and everybody else associated with it. You can also see that uh, they have this information about the game bundle, the ultimate edition for this game. And somebody said that this $169 amount right here is not actually accurate because this is European money. So I guess the American equivalent to this is about $130. Still insane though, $130 for a season pass, a Sabic Shark bundle, a Rogue Infiltrator bundle, digital art book, and three-day early access with pre-order. And the funny thing is that every... Okay, so it used to be that back in the day when you did a pre-order on a game, a lot of times you got physical artwork or physical a toy or a statue or some sort of figurine, and now everything is digital, especially with Ubisoft. They're the ones, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't Ubisoft just go and pull a bunch of games that they used to have uh, and not refund people? Or was that... That might have been PlayStation. I could be wrong, but I thought it was Ubisoft. Let me know in the comments. 
Um, and then, of course, we see somebody had pointed out on the box art for Star Wars Outlaws. You see right here, internet required to install the game. Why is a single player game need the internet to install it? Why are they already planning on needing a day one patch just to make this game playable? I ask you, like, explain that to me. Why does that make any sense? Now people are talking about the character herself. And again, she is a very handsome woman, very manly looking face. This is another one of these androgenized faces. And people are comparing it to this character, I believe, from the Warriors. Correct me if I'm wrong. And it's actually pretty accurate. Um, and you can see here, this guy's like they did it again. And you look at the actual model for the character, and she's gorgeous. She's stunning. Versus the character that they created, who is just kind of eh. Yeah, normal woman versus western game woman. Exactly. You just completely ruin the face, ruin the jaw, ruin the eyes, all of it. That's just how we do things over here in the west. Another picture of her here. Uh, stunning. Beautiful woman. And this is what we get. And so, of course, now today... It just dropped that Alyssa Mercante, our favorite psychopath from K Kotaku, has written an article about this game and all the backlash that it's getting titled Star Wars Outlaws Backlash Proves We Need More Women Protagonists. A woman of color is the lead in Ubisoft's upcoming open world Star Wars game. So we are going to jump in and dive right through this article. I hope you guys are ready because this is a doozy. This is everything you'd want it to be, all right? I was going to do the voice changer for this, but I figure if the article's too long, it's going to be too annoying. We're just going to go regular voice, and, and I'll, I'll save your guys' ears. So it says, Ubisoft's open-world Star Wars game is one of the most hyped titles to come out of Summer Game Fest 2023. Barf. <laughs> With its GTA-esque gameplay intriguing players, its sexy droid turning them on, I don't even know anything about a sexy droid, and it's woman protagonist making chuds, that's you and me guys, very, very angry. After Star Wars Outlaws was revealed during the Ubisoft showcase, some Gamergate adjacent gamers took issue with its protagonist, a woman of color named Kay Vess, portray uh, portrayed by Ven Venezuelan born actor Umberly Gonzalez. Some begged Ubisoft to let them switch to a male character as they've waited years for an open world Star Wars game and couldn't bear the thought of navigating through it as a woman. Others lamented the lack of lightsabers and men and said no thanks to the concept of anything else. Meanwhile, Star Wars Jedi Survivor is right there, brand new and playable and featuring a male protagonist. But Kay Vess represents a much larger issue within gaming and the Star Wars universe, and her role is a crucial one. See, she is a... She's going to redefine Star Wars for a whole new generation, guys. That's what this is all about. We are going to say, no, Star Wars is now for women, Okay. So this next section says Star Wars video games and women. See, I told you, here, here we go. Star Wars Outlaws falls into one of the most unfortunate center rings on the Venn diagram of bad actors, gamers, and Star Wars fans. Ooh, she's getting a two for one on this guy. This is a franchise still reeling from the Mary Sue allegations and general hatred thrown at Rey, the lead in the sequel trilogy. And as mentioned, the vestiges of the Gamergate hate campaign linger throughout gamer culture. As such, the backlash should be expected, even if it's exhausting. Aside from Battlefront 2, which features Eden Verzio as its main protagonist, though there are missions where you play as Luke Skywalker or Han Solo, Jedi Knight Mysteries of the Sith, an expansion for Dark Forces 2 that features Mara Jade as its star, and Star Wars Jedi Starfighter, which has Addy Galli as its lead, though it takes, mostly almost, takes place almost entirely in the cockpit of a ship, there are no other Star Wars games that lock you in as a female character. But there are plenty of them that make you play as a male character, from the wildly popular Star Wars Jedi game, uh, games to the Force Unleashed series and all the movie tie-ins in between. Or they let you choose between male and female characters, whether it's the Lego games. Okay, I don't give a crap about the Lego games. Okay, really? Knights of the Old Republic or other MMOs. As you can imagine, the choice often keeps misogynists quiet. Oh, she had to get that word in there. But Kay Vess is the female version of many Star Wars characters. A rogue, a rebel, a scoundrel, and a rapscallion. She could easily step into Han Solo or Cassian Andor's boots. So I, I have a name for her, actually. If you look at this face, she is a uh, androgynous solosexual. That's what we're naming her now, okay, guys? Androgynous solosexual. Uh, she's got an adorable companion creature, just like Jedi Survivor's Cal Kestis. And she's got that smirky sass that makes so many other Star Wars scumbags so lovable. On paper, she's the perfect lead for an open-world game about outlaws. It's just the fact that she's a she that's the problem. To, uh, though it's unsurprising that a woman-led game would receive backlash even now, this particular backlash is largely due to the lack of female protagonists across modern gaming. Hey, didn't Lara Croft just win 
most iconic game character of all time. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Think of every game that has won Game of the Year at uh, Jeff Keighley's Game Awards. Only two of them featured women protagonists, and they both shared the bill with men. Uh, Last of Us Part Two and It Takes Two. I'd argue Last of Us Part Two didn't really have any men in it from what I saw. I don't know. I didn't really play it. The others either had male protagonists. How dare they? Like God of War, Sekiro, The Witcher 3, and The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Damn Link anyways. God, he's always got to get in there. Or they had characters you could completely customize like Elden Ring and Dragon Age uh, Inquisition. Aside from Horizon series, which got backlash for giving protagonist Alloy realistic peach fuzz because men don't know everyone has a thin layer of hair covering their entire bodies, you'd be hard-pressed to find a AAA game led entirely, singularly by a woman. The Lara Croft series, sure, but even she had to go through a character rework to differentiate herself from her polygon-titted 90s counterpart. Right, and now everybody wants to play Lara Croft, right? No. No, everyone's, like, noping out of that one. And Metroid Prime Remastered Samus is almost always in a full suit of armor, so it's easy to forget that her franchise is led by a woman. Ubisoft has historically had its own problem with centering women protagonists, as well as a sordid trail of sexual misconduct claims. Yeah, 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 we all know about that one. As Polygon reported back in 2014, the company abandoned female protagonists in Assassin's Creed Unity, essentially saying that they weren't worth the additional work. No, it's because they knew it wouldn't sell, lady. You are insane. It's double the animations, double the voices, all that stuff, and double the visual assets, said creative director Alex uh, Mancio. Especially because we have customizable assassins. It was really a lot of extra production work. Well, he's not wrong. If it doesn't make the game better, it's wasted time and energy and manpower. And as Bloomberg's Jason Schreier detailed back in July 2020, Ubisoft reported issues with how it treated women employees bled into its inability to center female protagonists. Assassin's Creed Syndicate, Origins, and Odyssey were all meant to heavily feature women leads, but as their production advanced, their roles shrank. With Odyssey, Schreier reports that the team originally proposed making the sister the only playable character, according to four people who worked on the game until they were told that wasn't an option. So while it's unclear if the reported internal issues at Ubisoft have been resolved, the centering of a woman character in a Star Wars game is a breath of fresh air. God, we're all choking to death here, and she's calling it a breath of fresh air. <laughs> Both for games within the sci-fi fantasy franchise and games made by the studio. K Vess represents something much bigger than a new character in an open world game. She's a woman of color, oh god, in a, woman, in a world historically devoid of them, created by a studio notorious for shrinking its female characters. k is hopefully a sign of greater things to come from both Ubisoft and Star Wars. I just want to vomit in my mouth. Yo, guys, if you enjoyed that article... I know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Never mind. None of us enjoy... You didn't enjoy me listening to it. I didn't enjoy saying it. So... What we have here essentially is Alyssa Mercante doing her best to instigate Gamergate 2 all over again. You have the same people, Kotaku, talking about how now we have a female character and these damn chuds and misogynists and racists won't let us enjoy our female sexy bounty hunter even though she looks like a man. And damn them anyways, and they just shouldn't get to play any more video games because they're just a bunch of boys who won't play with girls. That's really what it comes down to. This is pathetic. Oh my gosh. All right. Let me know what you think about this down below, guys. Make sure to check out Meta PCs. Use the link down below, and I will catch you guys later. All right. And if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you for being here. I do have two channels, Minimal Effort Podcast, as well as my gaming channel. I do have a Twitch and Kick for my gaming channel. We do live streams over there occasionally, maybe once a week. And then if you are in the market for a new PC, make sure to check out Meta PCs. Click the link I have down below. Use code TBO at checkout for a special discount. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.